Thomas Owusu Mensah is a Ghanaian-American chemical engineer and inventor. His works are in the fields relating to the development of fiber optics and nanotechnology. He has 14 patents, seven of which awarded within a period of six years and was inducted into the U.S. National Academy of Inventors in 2015. Dr. Mensah served as editor-in-chief of the international textbook Nanotechnology Commercialization, published by AICHE and John Wiley and Sons. Thomas Mensah was born in Kumasi, Ghana. His father, J.K. Mensah, was a business merchant who shipped cocoa products to chocolate manufacturers in France. As a child, Mensah began learning to read newspapers and attain fluency in the French language early. After completing his undergraduate studies in Ghana at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Chemical Engineering, Mensah received a French government fellowship to study at Montpellier University in France. Prior to that, he attended Adisadel College in Cape Coast, Ghana. As a result of his fluency in French, he won the national French competition in Ghana both at the ordinary levels in 1968 and the advanced levels in 1970. While at Montpellier University in France, he took part in a program at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and received a certificate in modeling and simulation of chemical processes from MIT in 1977. A year later, he graduated with his PhD in chemical engineering from Montpellier University. Mensa worked at Air Products and Chemicals from 1980 to 1983. In 1983, Mensa joined Corning Glassworks, working in fiber optics research at Sullivan Park, New York. Researchers at Corning had previously developed optical fiber with loss below the critical attenuation limit of 20 dBKM but the fibers could not be manufactured at rates higher than 2 meters per second. Mensa improved the manufacturing process through a series of innovations, raising the speed of manufacture to 20 meters per second by 1985. This made the cost of optical fiber comparable to traditional copper cables. Mensa received the Corning Glass Works Individual Outstanding Contributor Award for this work in 1985. His work ultimately raised speed of manufacture above 50 ms. Mensa moved to Bell Laboratories in 1986, where he led a program to develop the first laser-guided weapons for the U.S. Department of Defense guided missile program, which enabled the development of missiles that travel at the speed of sound. That's Mach 1. This technology developed by Mensa earned him three patents. Mensa is a recipient of several awards, including Turner's Trumpet Award for Fiber Optics Innovation, Percy Julian Award, Golden Torch Award, the highest awards by NSBE. William Grimes Award and Eminent Engineers Awarded by AICHE. He is also a member of the AICHE 100. He has also published four books, namely Fiber Optics Engineering in 1987, Superconductor Engineering in 1992, his autobiography The Right Stuff Comes in Black 2 in 2013, and nanotechnology commercialization in 2017. In the first quarter of 2015, the government of the state of Georgia in the USA passed a House resolution to commend Mensa and his work. After staying and working in the United States for decades, Dr. Mensa has presently moved to his home country of Ghana, where he hopes to help accelerate the process of development and modernization of the country. In this video, he sits down and talks to Oral Ofuri of the African Dream LLC about his vision for Ghana bordering on the high-speed rail project that he has been championing for the country. Hello there, my name is Oral Ofuri. Welcome to your favorite human interest chat show, The African Dream.
today. We're very privileged and honored to have for our special guest, Dr. Thomas Mensa. Dr. Thomas Mensa is a fiber optics innovator and inventor. He's a nanotechnologist. He's originally from Ghana in West Africa, but he has worked in the U.S. for a long time. He has obtained a series of patents over a very short period of time, and we're visiting Ghana in Accra today to chat with him. Doc, welcome to the African Dream. Thank you, Ora. <laughs> it's such a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. I'm pleasure. excited. Yeah. Tell us, though, what are you doing in Ghana right now? Well, uh, first of all, you know I'm the one that developed the 100 day agenda for, for the development of Ghana. For the current government of Ghana? Yes. So, as soon as uh, after the elections in 2016, uh, I waited till the current president, Nanado Dankwa, uh, was inaugurated on the 7th. So, I had sent this 100 day agenda immediately to Ghana. Those are initiatives that this government has to start within the next hundred days after taking power to move Ghana forward, to modernize Ghana, to industrialize Ghana, to build the infrastructure. Right. So um, how long has it been since the government started working with you on your hundred day agenda? Uh, first of all, I met the president. Uh, first of all, we met both in my office in Atlanta, so I know him very well. We have discussed that infrastructure is very important for the country. Very. We've talked about infrastructure going from all the way the, from the south, Tema Akra, Takra, all the way to Rukumasi to the north. So we've talked about it. Right. But a new element <coughs> that I introduce is this high-speed train. Because I believe that the high-speed train or the bullet train is so important for Ghana. And I'm talking of only about half the speed of the bullet train in Japan or China. Okay. So, so it's doable. It's interesting you say you're talking about just half the speed. Some people have been on the, uh, of the opinion that Ghana is not ready for a bullet train. What do you say to them? Well, uh, Ghana... Uh, Actually, Kenya could have said the same thing, that we are not ready for these high-speed trains. But Kenya has done it. Okay. While Ghanaians, like you said, are debating. We had an independence before Kenya. And in one of my television interviews, I actually showed the Kenyans riding, the Maasai riding on their high-speed train. We are moving containers from Mombasa to Nairobi. Can you believe that? They are moving passengers, the Maasai. The Maasai are sitting on their high-speed train, on their iPad. The Maasai, everybody talks about them, and Ghanaians are still debating. So this is unacceptable. Ghanaians can do that. We had our independence first. We have the capability. We have more minerals. We have more educated people. Ghanaians should do this. So it's just a matter of change of mindset and the willingness of leadership to attach itself to the development of this high-speed train thing for it to get off the ground and become a reality. Exactly. The government, particularly in Nanado, has stepped in and said, hey, Doc, this is important. Discuss, discuss this with my ministers. And I met all of them. And so the 100-day agenda has been accepted in Ghana. It's been implemented in Ghana. Not only the high-speed train in the 100-day agenda, infrastructure roads, you know, you heard about the Sino Hydro and all that. Right, right. It's in the hundred day agenda. You know, we put two billion for Sino Hydro. That means they gotta fix all the roads in Ghana so that they can move all the goods in, in terms of even 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 the the uh, uh Ashanti is the bread basket. Right. They should be able to move all the products that are grown, move it on these new roads straight and hopefully straight to the high-speed train so that they get on the high-speed train can go either Tamale, it can go to the market, can go to even Tema to go abroad, not rot. Now 40% right. of agricultural products is lost. Rot, it's lost. So the infrastructure and 100-day agenda is going to solve all these problems. Now, um, tell me, Doc, you have had the opportunity to meet and interact with some of the um, ministers under yes. the Nana Adodankwa Akufu Adu regime. Yes. Yes. Um, 
based on all that interaction, what are the vibes you're getting? Do you feel it's a positive vibes? Do you do you feel? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The railway board? minister has been very, very, very receptive. You know, in fact, my hundred day agenda actually calls the creation of the railway ministry because I stress the importance of this high speed rail that Kenya is ahead, Morocco is ahead, Ethiopia is ahead, even Senegal is ahead. So Ghana cannot just be way behind there. Right. So that's going well. The railway ministry is doing well. You know, they had of all the uh, they had three or four railway lines already. The Eastern Line has been awarded uh, 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 recently. The Western was the first to be awarded uh, to Railway 5. They are doing that. Right. You know, now you want these rail to go all the way to the border and possibly to Burkina. So, so this is very... across national? Yes. That's very, very important because the landlord countries, they need their, their container, they need their food. They import everything, just like we do. So they need it up there. Instead of spending five days of containers to get there, it'll be there in a day. You know, in, in Ouagadougou in one day. Right. So this is serious. And, and I'm just excited that the government is now stepped in India, moving aggressively. This is a big money project. Um, some of the difficulties that might be on the horizon, I can probably assume, would be the finances. Yes. Speak to some of these difficulties and what you have in plan uh, to, you know, fight against these difficulties or to solve these uh, difficulties. Uh, basically, I mentioned Railway 5. Railway 5, they have financing from China. They got it. It's going to be done, you know. You look at the, uh, I know a group that brought in 1.2 billion, you know, with the Chinese on the Eastern line. So all this financing is no problem because they look at it as you have the containers, the minerals that's being transported, they'll pay for this thing, you know. So it's no brainer. We got to do these things. Right. If you don't do it, Ghana will be where it is for the next 10 years and you don't want that. What are some of the uh, uh, plans to re um, repay or somewhat reduce the debt burden that would be generated as a result of implementing this program? Well, basically, the, the investors, they, they are very excited to be investing in Ghana because they think it's a viable project. You know, I've been on one of the investment missions personally. You know, China has built 40 high-speed trains already China has I went on the presidential delegation to China I sat in their bullet train it's marvelous in fact the vibration and solution technology means that if I put a glass of water in a train on a table it doesn't even shake not a drop of water they are using the same technology that NASA uses to isolate the astronauts when the space shuttle is going up so you put it there, it doesn't shake. You try doing that in a trotro. Right. You know, so we come, can't be know. in those ages. Right. So they have that. And what I, I'm, why I'm serious about this is once we do this high speed train, I mean, have the speed of really bullet train, it means Ghana is going to be developed. All the countries I've mentioned that have the high speed train Kenya, Ethiopia, Morocco, even Seneca, they're all ahead of us. Mm. Senegal now, because of the high-speed train, is assembling not cars, they're assembling airplanes. See, once you get a technology, things follow. Right. You can move things. See, right now, the way we have it, Ghana has signed an agreement for about five automotive companies to come and assemble here. Mm. We are forced to put them on the, on the, on the coast, coastal belt. Why? Because you, we put it in Yendi, there's no high-speed train to bring it here. You know, our routes are bad. You put it in Kumasi. And so that's why I'm pushing for this modernization, this industrialization process, right. starting with a high-speed train. We do that, we'll be doing so many things. You know, I've been pushing for the MRO in Kumasi that can lead to assembly of plane parts and all that. You know, and I, I did that because, you know, Tunfo, I believe in his vision. He wanted to develop Kumasi. For the past five years, he's quietly doing it. So putting an MRO in Kumasi, which you've raised the money for, right? You know, putting it there means that all the airplanes, you know, in the entire 
ECOWAS countries, mm -hmm. Mauritania, Morocco, everywhere, who come to our Kumase. They come in, Kwame Nkrumah University students and graduates, as well as Ligon Aviation Sciences, they just replace all the parts that are bad. They inspect it. Oh, this avionics instrument is bad. Let's replace it. You remember the, the, the plane that took off from uh, Delta Airline from, from, from New York? Right. And then the landing gear caught on fire. You want to detect that before it gets into the air. Mm -hmm. So this hub is so important for the entire West Africa, for Kumasi and the entire Ghana. It will make aviation safe. It was everything on my 100-day agenda is so important. That's why I've been working so hard to move it, move it ahead. Some people are worried and uh, they're saying this is a big money project, like I keep saying. We're getting uh, financiers coming in to express interest in um, sponsoring the financial costs involved with this project. It looks like um, the will, power, and the desire on the side of government to partake of this project to make it a reality is also there. People are listening to your 100 day agenda and there's all this positive you know, energy going on in support of this project. Um, there are also people who are of the view, how are we gonna get rid of the debt that would be created as a result of implementing this project? Well, the debt, when you look at it, the, the instead of Instead of taking debt like we've done in the past, mm. we took debt on and we don't see any results. We don't see a single infrastructure. That's done. Taking on these, the debts, when you look at the cost benefit ratio and value for money, mm. putting them in infrastructure, whether it's the aviation hub, whether it's the high speed rail, whether it's the, 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 the Sino Hydro, that's important because now, once you do that, goods are going to move faster. Your GDP is going to go higher. Your food will not stay spoiled. You know, you have things that you can sell. And you put something on this train in Tamale, it goes straight to the port, just like in China. Right. And you're sending overseas. So you'll be making things. Look, take the 1D1F. One That's one of this the 100-day 100, 100 agenda also. Right. Because in the 100, I spell it out. Factories in all regions. That's one D1F for you. Mm -hmm. So these factories that you are creating, if you can move the machines to the factory sites, if you cannot move the parts to the factory site, if you cannot move the finished products to Tema or to the consumer product, then what's the use of doing that? So everything has been, I thought about this, I sat down for months to develop this thing. And that's the only way Ghana is going to develop. 1D1F is a great idea. We better put the factories, I said, in all regions. And so that we will make some, Ghana for the first time, we're making something. We don't make anything. Right. We don't make even a tooth, toothpick. <laughs> Can you believe it? Right. How are you going to increase your GDP? Everybody, oh, Ghana is going, going to grow at uh, this, this uh, 6 8 8%. For what? For doing what? What are you producing? You're not producing anything. If you don't make anything, even China, where they make things, you know, you cannot surpass them. Right. Ghana has four, uh, China has 40 of these high-speed trains all over their, 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 their country. Right. So they make something, whether it's an Apple phone, it's on the port going to America or going over the world. So there's some wisdom in this thing. So this, this is a debt worth, you know, incurring because from what you're saying, it has a potential, great potential to pay for itself. Let me tell you, Korea, South Korea, mm. Malaysia, they took on the same debt and look at where they are. They are taking the minerals. We just walk on the minerals. We walk on iron that can be turned into steel. We walk on, on manganese, we walk on gold, we walk on all of these. I had somebody say, oh, let's leave it to post our children. Children that can't eat. The children can't even go to school. Their schools are falling apart. Why don't you take the money and use it to develop the schools so that the children can benefit today, not tomorrow, not 50 years from now? No. That's what South Korea has done. That's what Malaysia has done. That's what all these co countries have done. Now they take the steel, the iron ore from us, right. make a steel out of it, turn into cars. 
all the Kia motor car, millions of them here, turn and come and sell it to us. Mm. And we just walking on it and debating. And you know, what is that? You know, madness is doing the same thing over and over and over. For 50 years, we haven't done nothing. This is about the time Ghana should move forward. Right, right. Now, you speak about moving forward. Um, uh, some African countries have done what seems to have been impossible. A country like Rwanda engaged in yes. civil war, you know, yes. killing each other. Just two tribes. Yes. They have come back from that war yes. and they are moving forward. And they are moving forward so rapidly and yes. so amazingly. Yes. Gives me hope to see uh, to see that happen, and like you're saying, Ghana can also be a prime example of that. Exactly, you know, Ghana. We are not fighting like the, those people are right. fighting we some tribal war. We don't us. have all that. Even the Africa coast, after wars, look at what what, what they are doing. Mm. So that shouldn't be. We should be moving forward aggressively, because if we don't do that, for the next 20 years we'll be where we are, and then Ghanaians have, have themselves to blame for that. It's not that Dr. Mensah didn't come in and said we got to do these things. All the people who, from China, who were educated in the West, they went back home and look at what they've done. They've transformed that thing. I've stepped up. I am here. I've been working hard day and night. I just established Silicon Valley of Ghana, the first in West Africa. Silicon Valley of Ghana, that's on one, my 100-day agenda. Now, l let me not cut you, but Google has a... Uh a hub here. Exactly. How does that make you feel? It makes make me feel better. Because Google could have taken the, uh, the, the uh, AI lab to South Africa, Nigeria, some places. So oh, hey, we are going. Dr. Mensah has created Silicon Valley with AI and all that there already with all the four universities, major ones, and additional associates and all that, we can work with him, we can work with the universities, we can make Ghana the artificial intelligence center in the entire Africa. It makes me feel proud that I did not wait, I did not debate. I went ahead and established it in six months, Google is here. Now, you had lived in the diaspora for decades. Yes. You decided not too long ago to move to Ghana to help be a part of the forward movement to advance the country that a lot of diasporans have been talking about. Now, we have a lot of diasporans watching us. Um, this is being aired on Fairfax County Public TV in the United States, which yeah. reaches across to District of Columbia, Maryland, and Virginia states, which has a huge, you know, Ghanaian concentration. It's also shared across in other parts of the U.S. Tell me, um, what advice do you have to, uh, to give the diasporans, especially those who have paper to burn, cash to spend, but are very afraid and very scared of moving back to Ghana? Well, I would say that they should, they should uh, come to Ghana. Uh, this is the year of return uh, since slavery. So this 500 years, 400, uh, 400 years. years, thank you, uh, since slavery. Uh, African Americans are going to come here. Right. Ghanaians in the diaspora, blacks all over should be coming here. And then with this infrastructure development, modernization that we are doing, they will find a place in Ghana. The investment is going to mean something. It's not that you go put investment in a country that doesn't have infrastructure. No roads, no railways, nothing. The way we are doing it, they will feel like they are even in America, where they can sit on trains, and be on their iPads and be working when they are going from Maryland to, you know, on the trains. Right. Doing that. They can do that in Ghana. And that's what we are pushing, we've been working on. I'll say they should, they should, they should come and be part of this, this, this experiment because this is where they were born. Most of them come from here, you know, no matter what it is. You know, if you don't come and you don't do anything, you don't want to get part of the event, that means you're going to stay forever. You know, and use your knowledge uh, to help other countries. You know, I'm one of the co-creators of fiber optics. Without me, your cell phone cannot connect to the internet because of the innovation that I did in America. Mm. It's one of the biggest innovations throughout the world. Over, uh, uh, billions of people are now connecting their cell phones to the internet, social media, because of that technology. I could have just said, hey, I've done enough for the whole world. But the question, what are you doing for your own country? Will they ask you, uh, Ghana, what's going on in Ghana? When Bill Gates asked me, what am I going to say? You know, Mark Zuckerberg asked me, what am I going to say? We've got to come in, we've got to help, we've got to move Ghana forward. So, like Dr. Mensah is saying, he's calling for 
uh, an intellectual repatriation where all the um, uh, intellectuals and those who are very, you know, uh, educated in respective uh, sectors of um, life to bring in their knowledge and expertise to Ghana or whatever African country they are from and contribute to the advancement of the yes. African continent. Yes, yes. Tell me, um, doctor, um, what is your African dream? Where Africa you may mean Africa? every everything on hundred day agenda all accomplished, finished. Give us a quick snapshot of what is on the hundred day agenda. The hundred day agenda I started off for us to look at all the financial position in the country when when they took over. He has to look at all that. And that's how they discovered all the bank failures, by the way. It's on the hundred day agenda. Yeah, I have this high speed rail, I've talked about that. I have this uh, modern highways and hydro and all that are doing that. I have this the creation of factories in every single region. One D, one F has taken it and moving forward. Yeah, so Silicon Valley is so important to Ghana. You do just Google Silicon Valley of Ghana and you see it. You see the kind of great things that are happening. Just during the Otoon Force anniversary, 20th, 20th anniversary, anniversary, we went to Kwame Nkrumah University, called the Chancellor's Week, trained 600 students, Silicon Valley and Hack Lab, the, the first hackathon in West Africa, the largest. We trained 600 students in three days in software. We brought in all these uh, private sector companies, IBM, uh, Vodafone, and they, 20 companies, they sponsored these kids. Can you imagine moving 600 kids from, from all the universities, bring them one, the logistics of doing that. You know, my, 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 my good friend, uh, the CEO of Hack Lab, who is part of Silicon Valley, you were able to do, do, do this. And I was the keynote speaker. When the kids saw me on stage, when they saw that I'm digitizing, I'm digitizing the hand movement, right. and using that, in a smart watch to control things. You do this and all your doors are locked. You do this and then the, the, the light brightens. You do this, the light goes down. You can do this and it, it changes the channel on television. When they see how uh, we have digitized the hand movement, this is a patented product. Mm. When they saw that, they said, oh, this is what my AI is going to do. They're little kids. So you could see them, you could see their faces. Or just like Hackathon started with Bill Gates. He used to start and code all night, writing program. These kids were doing it all day. Can you believe this? They were serious, and I'm glad to see that in Ghana. I did that for two and four as a gift so that that 600 students, this is human capacity building. All the city, they will receive certificates, you know, uh, not only from Silicon Valley, but from Hack Lab and also IBM, they can use all their credits. And then, I mean, these companies were there to hire them to and interview them. So for the first time, they have something, skills in software that they could be hired by Vodafone, IBM, Google, you name it. Right, right. Look, it's, it's been such a pleasure having you. Um, before we leave you though, um, what do you have to say to that African who feels like I've heard all these positive and amazing things being said. I've heard them over and over, and I'm, I'm, I've just lost, lost faith in the system. Well, some of them came in to Ghana. I know a physician. He was at Cape Coast. He did, got, got disappointed and went back. <laughs> you know, I me, mean, I said, forget about those days. I'm pushing. It's a new day now. Come and try it. You know, it's not like you and sit in some minister's office for two hours. They can see you like they used to do. Things are changing in Ghana. They should come. If I'm pushing, I believe in Africa. I believe in Ghana. You know, here, from here, I want to go and help ECOWAS, the entire uh, sub-Saharan. You know, so that technology will be here, so that the entire ECOWAS can move forward. I'm serious about it. And all my colleagues, I invite you come, it's worthwhile, it's worth it. You heard Dr. Thomas Spencer, come, it's worth it. He's campaigning and championing the effort to move Ghana forward and to use that as an example to move Africa forward as well. 
It's been a pleasure talking to you, though. It's a great pleasure, my friend. And we're looking forward to riding in that bullet train. Thank you. Very soon. <laughs> Thank you. It's going to happen. Thank pleasure. You. Pleasure. Sure. pleasure. Oh my baby, you know money, no day, baby, I be okay. I will not play, I go work hard, I know my body. Take a look at me now, everything gonna change soon. Make you be with me now, and my other than you're gone too soon. Baby, I better find you.